Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Generation Z Gadgets. And for this episode of Gadget V Gadget, let's take a look at two of the biggest competing email clients, and that is Google Gmail and Microsoft Outlook. So uh, I'm gonna be looking at this in a very unique way that I think would be really helpful to you guys. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so now let's take a look at both Gmail and Outlook. So as you can see, the login process is very similar for both of them, and they both have really nice, simple UIs, and I think it's great. And uh, something else that you'll realize is that they integrate really well with their respective app suite. So for example, on the Gmail side, you can go to the Google Apps right here, and you can access all the various Google apps, not only in Google Drive, Google Search, Google Maps, but other things like YouTube, Calendar, Translate, Photos, and if you click more, they've got a lot of stuff and they've got a lot of apps in the Google app suite. So you have a ton of options to choose from. Duo, I made a cool video on, you can check that out by clicking that card right there. Um, and then on the Outlook side, you have, of course, integration with Microsoft Office. So there's actually a ton of apps you can go to as well. Not quite as many as Google, but maybe slightly higher quality because Office, you do have to pay for it. So you get Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, Excel, the whole app suite. And I think that's one of the most strong sides is that you have really good integration, really easy access to the respective apps. And honestly, it's like really easy to access. So uh, I think it's brilliant. And both of the suites are great. Another cool thing is that both of these email clients do include the feature of themes. So for example, uh, here with Google, you can just go down to themes and pick a dark theme, for example, something that another uh, company was lacking for a very long time. And then here also, you can include a dark theme. There is a dark mode, but the themes themselves are just generally not as expensive. So there are dark modes. Um, I prefer having a light mode. Dark mode I like to use for YouTube and stuff like that, where I uh, use it more at night. So two more things that the both of these uh, email clients do very well is number one, free to um, create accounts for either one of these. With Gmail, you have to create a full Google account and that gives you access to everything that Google offers from YouTube to uh, Google search, uh, to, to Maps, a lot of other features. Of course, you can use it without an account, but with Google, uh, with the Google account, it gives you uh, more personalized access to each of those apps. And then, of course, on the Outlook side, you have the same thing, but uh, you do get access to the entire suite as well with a, an account. Yeah, it's uh, pretty similar and a lot of the apps that you see on Google's side, there are exact equivalents on the Microsoft side. For example, I'd like to point out one specifically, Google Photos, uh, it's unlimited free storage for your photos and videos. I personally love it and I will never switch from that unless something else mind-blowing comes along. You've got, um, where is it? You got OneDrive uh, on, on Microsoft's side. You also got Dropbox if that's interesting as well. So another thing is that they also both support for devices and also for connectivity. So there's great connectivity on both of these. Both of these clients support IMAP and POP, which are the two most common. And it basically runs pretty smoothly on almost any device you put it on, Android or iOS or another uh, device as well. Runs well on laptops, com desktop computers, phones, tablets, you name it. So I think this is a great uh, way to on the web to access either one. As you can see with Google, they really emphasize simplicity, whereas on the Microsoft side, they're sort of using a more sophisticated Windows 10 kind of feel. So it's just more of your vibe. I don't think it's really uh, one's better than the other. Now let's move on to Gmail's uh, strengths. So, so Gmail has a lot of strengths uh, over Microsoft Outlook, I think some of the main strengths include, uh, for example, its ability to automatically sort between primary, which are person's person conversations and messages that don't appear in other tabs. Uh, you got social networking uh, and promotion. So like things, marketing emails and a lot of stuff I don't even want to read. So that's all I can go over there. But on the Microsoft side, you don't really have that. Another feature that is definitely a strength of Gmail is that they have what are called uh, labels instead of folders. So instead of your traditional folders like you have on Outlook, 
In Gmail, what you have is labels. So if you go down to manage labels and you can look at the different labels that have automatically been created for Gmail. And some of the ones include, for example, inbox, which is obviously a nice one to have. Um, start, snooze, important, chats, send, schedule, drafts. So a lot of the basic ones, but you can create your own labels, for example. Uh, you can create a label name such as emails I never want to see again. And then you can put it underneath uh, another, another Nest label if you want. Unfortunately, I don't have any other labels. Uh, so just create and then there you go. It's right there and you can put stuff inside there um, And the way it's different from folders is that you can put multiple labels within other labels So with folders you can just have one folder of stuff and you can't add Specific subfolders to that but with labels you can and also it's a lot more accessible So it's very easily manageable as well. So another feature I really like and this is probably the one of the most uh, strongest um, features for Gmail uh, and this is a pretty much the reason why I use Gmail instead of Outlook um, is basically if you want to compose an email uh, and let's say you send it to I'm just gonna send it to myself let's just say you you, you accidentally send an email that you didn't mean to send right um, and so you sent it oh well you can actually undo the message really quickly just like that and it comes back up so you can edit it um, I found this to be life-saving in some situations where you accidentally send it to the wrong person or you send something that you didn't mean to send. It's a, it's a lot of different ways that uh, this can go wrong. Um, but and the feature is super, super, super helpful to have. And you do not have an Outlook. Um, I'm sure Google's patented the feature in some way, but you don't have an Outlook. And uh, you only get a few seconds to unsend it. So you be mindful that you have to make up your mind in just a few seconds and have really fast reaction time. But if you do it uh, within the amount, uh, certain amount of time Google gives you, I think it's about 15, 20 seconds, then you can actually unsend the message and it's beautiful. So another feature that I wanna showcase that makes Google a lot better is you can have more sophisticated searching. So Google, obviously, one of its main features uh, in general is the ability to search and to search really comprehensive things. So for example, if I wanna say from me, uh, I should get all the emails I've sent from to myself. I've only sent one, but um, you get the idea. Uh, if I want to say from TubeBuddy, for example, um, I get the ones from TubeBuddy as well. So it's a lot more comprehensive. You can also have emails to somebody, to uh, me. You know, I can have that as well. So in general, um, it's very, very uh, interesting to see. Uh, it's very, it's a lot more accessible and you can like, access your emails uh, very, well, e a lot more easily that way. And I personally have never felt that Gmail has rendered me unable to find a certain message. Whereas on the Outlook side, I will showcase it right now. You can put in certain things. Um, I'm going to blur the names by the way, because this is actually a personal email I use. As you can see, or you can't see, but as you can sort of see, uh, it does show the emails, but it actually highlights the uh, names in yellow, meaning that it actually is just looking for the keyword. It's not actually understanding what it means. So if I say to the same person, it actually will just show me the same thing. So that's a difference I think uh, Gmail definitely has over Outlook, and it actually exists in Apple Mail as well. But uh, we're not discussing Apple Mail for this, uh, and the Apple Mail is not meant to compete really with Gmail and Outlook. So another thing is that, and this is not really easily showcaseable, but uh, Gmail has much more sophisticated spam filtering than uh, its competitor, and it's just a fact. But basically, um, yeah, it's it's a huge step. It's a much easier at, at filtering spam. The promotions, as you can see, there is a lot of stuff I get from. Canva, uh, which is actually what I use to make my channel art, and I don't want to read it, so it's a lot easier to just oh, open this one specific portion and not to read about it ever again, and you can mass delete as well if you really want to do that. And then also, it has a, Gmail in general has a much more uh, wider range, uh, selection of, of uh, extensions, so if you look at the, some of the extensions they have with Gmail, there's a lot of support for it. And also, in general, you have things such as Google Translate, which actually, uh, the extensions work really well within Gmail. Whereas with 
I will look, you just don't have the same kind of selection. And finally, my probably one of my favorite features other than the unsend feature of Gmail is just that I like the UI more. Uh, you can disagree with me and that's totally fine, but in my opinion, uh, it's just it's a lot of a more simpler layout and I, I just love how it looks and while Windows 10 I definitely like the look and feel of this as well uh, Drafting new emails as well. is very nice But I just don't have it just doesn't appeal to me the same way and maybe that's just me But um, it's you can tell it's a lot more complicated on the side It takes a bigger learning curve than it definitely does with Gmail. And Gmail knows this and they've really pushed the simplicity on their UI. So now moving on to Outlook side, um, they've got a lot of really strong feature set as well that doesn't, that doesn't come with Gmail. For example, number one is they do have uh, 15 gigabytes of free storage offered off the bat for just Outlook. Whereas Gmail, they do give you also 15 gigs of storage, but you have to share it with other apps like Google Drive, which you might write a lot of documents on, that will take up a lot of space. But, so in general, um, you got more space for your emails, although they don't take up that much space. If you're a big business executive, Outlook's probably the way to go. Gmail's more for like light, uh, everyday kind of use. I, Outlook's more something that is used by business professionals and stuff like that. There's also no limit to the size of the attachment uh, in Outlook, whereas with Gmail, there's a limit of about 25 megabytes if I remember correctly. So that's just another feature in which Google Gmail doesn't stack up to Microsoft Outlook as much. This room is getting really hot, by the way. Another thing is that uh, if you have an Office 365 subscription, you actually get one terabyte of free storage for your uh, Microsoft App Suite, which you don't have that kind of deal with Google Drive. Um, so if you have Office 365, definitely make sure to take advantage of that. Another feature I really like about Microsoft Outlook is that they have automatic message tagging so they actually tag your messages into specific groups such as photos newsletters uh, documents etc finally quick search allows you to look at the last few emails that you've been sent i'm sorry it's not going to really be that clear in essence what it means is that there is a lot of times when i really wanted to search for the last emails from somebody or my last few searches and microsoft quick search or quick view search or whatever it's called um, is really good at doing that, like quick, easy access of your most recent messages. And Google, on the other hand, does not have that. They have your most recent searches, but they don't have that, which is the most recent contacts that have either emailed me or I've emailed them. So that's a, that about wraps it up for my comparison. Uh, if you had to give, if I had to give a verdict right now, I'd say for the average consumer, Gmail definitely makes the most sense. Microsoft Outlook is more for business executives, but of course can be used by the average consumer as well. I think it really boils down at the end of the day, too, is um, which app suite you use more. If you use Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, um, Google Calendar, Google Keep, definitely use Google Gmail. It's a lot easier. Uh, if you use Office, which a lot of business people tend to use, it doesn't really make sense to use that. Um, whereas with Outlook, easy access, perfect integration with your office suite. So that about wraps up for this video. I'm definitely going to make a really interesting Gadget v Gadget video coming up relatively soon um, in uh, comparing Google, the Google App Suite to the Microsoft App Suite because I think uh, a couple years back Microsoft was the indisputed king but times are changing and Google has made some really nice apps and I think it'd be really interesting to compare side by side what the differences are what makes sense to buy in 2019. Um, Google App Suite is free, Microsoft does cost something, so is that extra fee worth it? We'll be discussing that in the video. I think that'll settle a lot of questions. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, check the link in the description below if you guys want to create an account with either Gmail or Outlook. I'll leave the link in the description below if you have not done that already. Um, I actually personally really like iCloud Mail a lot. I don't want to make a video on that, but if I do, it will be on my Apple Tech Talks channel. So go follow that right now and subscribe if you're new and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again. Uh, make sure to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and leave a comment below telling you what you want me to make my next video on. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gadget v Gadget. And as always, I will see you in the next video.